Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday. Over here in the Atlantic, we continue to watch Tropical Storm Emily still sitting here south of Hispaniola, churning away really the only feature to watch in the Atlantic right now, and we will be focusing her very closely through this weekend as she moves northwest and starts threatening more land areas. If we zoom in on the floater here, the sun is just now coming up. We can see that there is a nice large mass of convection that has sustained itself overnight that redeveloped over Emily's center, and according to the re Con. The center is actually now located right in here at the end of the loop under this small thunderstorm cluster, and it's now located a lot closer to the center of the thunderstorm mass. Notice that over the last few days, we've had the center out near the western edge of the convection, but now for one of the first times since the storm formed, we see it more under the center of the cloud mass, and the pressure is still down only around 1,006 millibars, so it's not deepening a whole lot yet, but I expect that we may actually start to see some gradual strengthening before this moves on shore over Haiti sometime during the next day or so. This will now be able to try to organize a little bit better. It's more vertically stacked now, meaning that the low level center in the low levels of the atmosphere and the mid level center in the mid levels of the atmosphere are more on top of each other in here, more aligned vertically and this is going to allow it to try to strengthen a little bit more. This is the microwave pass from a couple of hours ago. No, this is not an eye wall right here. The system is far too weak for that. The surface center is more in here, and what this is showing us is again that the center is more centered within the cloud mass and the areas of convection and heavy precipitation south of Haiti in the Dominican Republic. Also notice that since last night, this has not moved a whole lot. We saw it just south of the southern tip of the Dominican Republic last night and it's still around this area right now not moving very much the last two recon vortex messages suggested that this might be drifting very slowly off to the northwest here but the movement from two recon messages one hour apart is not going to tell us a whole lot this will likely very slowly move towards the west northwest or northwest today making some kind of a move towards the southwestern peninsula of Haiti in here during the day today and then tonight eventually starting to lift north into that weakness that we've been talking about. Here's the water vapor imagery, and it's hard to see too far north here, but here's the base of that trough. It's actually more up here, but you can kind of see where it would be here. The base of the trough is leaving off to the northeast. We saw that the trough started lifting out yesterday, and it's leaving a trailing weakness behind over the western Atlantic here. So we have the southern United States ridge right in here over the south, and then we have the Atlantic ridge out here. There's a weakness in between, and we're waiting to see Emily try to make her move into this weakness. She's been moving very slowly, which implies that steering currents are weak, and steering currents generally are weak around the southwest periphery of a high-pressure system when there is a trough waiting to pick up the storm. So eventually the movement should start to turn here into this trough and start moving north towards the Bahamas with time here. Notice that we have the trailing trough, and then look back here, the tail of the trough is breaking off like I've been talking about for several days now. Notice that there's a little bit of rotation over here in the western Caribbean. This is an upper level low developing that is now starting to back away westward and this is something that you have to watch for. When these upper lows are backing away westward from tropical cyclones to their east, it implies that the environment is improving aloft over the system which may allow it to start strengthening and notice that because the center is now back near the center of the convective mass, we have less wind shear in here. That's that's what we have to thank for this less wind shear. Some of the dry air is getting mixed out and we see some outflow starting to expand on the western side of the system. We still have a band of dry air here to the northwest that is trying to get entrained into the storm, but eventually this will try to get mixed out a little bit more and as the upper level high over the system begins to expand as this upper low splits off, moves west, and this shear zone starts to break, this upper ridge will start to expand over Emily and allow her to breathe a little little bit better here, which means that after she gets across Haiti and eastern Cuba and into the Bahamas area, some gradual strengthening may be possible. There will still be some negatives. Again, we have this band of dry air to overcome, and then this ridge, this upper ridge over the southeastern United States is bringing northerly and northeasterly winds aloft into the northern Bahamas. These winds are sinking and drying out the air, so there is another band of dry air in here that is hard to see on the water vapor, but it is there in the lower levels of the atmosphere off the southeast U.S. coast 
coast, which may be a problem for Emily as she tries to move northwest. It'll also be hard for her high, the high over Emily, to integrate with this high. They're going to have to combine in order for shear to lessen over the storm. Don tried to do this in the Gulf of Mexico when this big high was in here, and he tried to develop a ridge that would merge with this. Don failed. Don was sheared all the way until landfall and was unable to strengthen. It remains to be seen whether Emily will be able to take advantage and pump enough heat into this area to generate her own anticyclone aloft and try to strengthen and overcome that dry air. But chances are conditions in here will be better, probably the best of her lifetime over this region, which means gradual strengthening may be possible if she survives interaction with the mountains. Now, this is the mean steering layer right now again showing the ridge over the south the ridge over the Atlantic the break in between showing that this should start to move northwest notice that the the trough is leaving over here to the east northeast this break will eventually close off as this ridge starts to build in a little bit more towards the west northwest trying to bridge with this ridge in here which means that as Emily starts to move northwest she will immediately start being forced back towards the west northwest a little bit more as this ridge tries to build into her northeast and then eventually this west northwesterly flow will end up bringing a short wave down over the eastern United States that will curve Emily out to the east northeast very fast away from the US coastline. Now this kind of a track is going to again bring Emily very close to Florida and I've been preaching this for many many days now that this track is going to be very close to Florida and it's very hard to say whether there will actually be a landfall. This is the GFS 48 hours 500 millibar. We have this big strong ridge over the southern US and notice that the trough is way gone over here and we have an elongated ridge oriented southeast to northwest and Emily should be down here in the Bahamas getting steered west northwest towards south Florida. Eventually it'll hit this weakness. There's a weakness between the two ridges. If we have a ridge here and a ridge here, there's going to be a natural weakness here. Whether it be a short wave or just the weakness in the ridge, the weak link in the ridge chain is what basically this is, which implies that as Emily moves towards south Florida, eventually she get caught in the weakness and then move on out to the northeast around this new ridge. And this is going to take it within, I think, 100 miles of Florida, and to give you an idea of what that is, that is west of this line, west of the northern Bahamas, basically it should move through the northern Bahamas or farther west, so it's going to get very close to the Florida coastline, and even without a direct landfall, some impacts may be felt here along the coast. The Bahamas will get this first, Cuba and Haiti still have to deal with really heavy rains from this, and deadly floods which are now occurring, especially since Emily is all but stalling down here, bringing heavy rains to Hispaniola. Those folks will be impacted first, but if we're going to talk about the United States, it's going to be South Florida, the rest of these states should continue need to keep an eye on it, but probably will get spared here as, again, the pattern favors a sharp recurve, not a sweeping turn up into the Carolinas here. South Florida, if we're going to get the hit here in the United States, it will be Florida in the southeastern part of the state, and it will be close. After today, we may be able to make a call on whether this actually goes east or actually comes in but it's going to be very close and either way some impacts will probably be felt in this area from the storm. Now here's the models again showing a difference showing a spread here. These here I can see how they could be a little bit alarming. This is the BAM suite. What folks should understand is that these models are based off of initial conditions only, which means they do not dynamically forecast the steering pattern and are very poor models in situations where the pattern is changing rapidly, such as we have here. With a trough leaving and a ridge building in to steer Emily in different over a short period of time, these models can be discounted here. The good models here, it's hard to see the gray lines, but the GFS ensemble members here actually bring in a track that I really like that bring Emily northwest, curve it west-northwest towards Florida, and then curve it out to the northeast. Again, I'm not really a fan of the NHC track that shows a gradual sweeping turn off to the northeast. That implies that the weakness is constantly strengthening, which shouldn't be true here. As the ridge builds into the northeast of the storm, we should see first northwest, then a bend to the left, and then a commitment out to sea. So we should see a double concavity of the track here. That's just my opinion. Heed the NHC warnings and advisories for this and be aware in this area as this gets closer towards impact watches may have to be issued for South Florida later tonight if the track continues to stay close to the Florida coastline. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.